Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I thought I would chat with you guys a little bit about one of the conundrums that we run into when we look at all the research and all the stuff that the best coaches in the world out there have to say regarding hypertrophy when it comes to uh, rep ranges, intensity, rest times, everything else, is that ultimately what we end up with is that total workload that you do uh, is the driving factor in, in hypertrophy. That seems to be the biggest factor. And the reason I say that is that uh, workload ends up being something like weight moved on a lift times reps done for the total workout. Uh, although we could even look at, at that as quality of reps done uh, and even factor in distance moved. Like we could do all these formulas. And here's the thing that gets interesting. When you start looking at it, they all, they all balance out in the end. Um, because here's the different things that we look at. We know that when workload is equal, hypertrophy tends to be pretty much equal in studies that look at it no matter what rep range you use. In other words, three rep sets produce just as much muscle growth as 10 rep sets uh, when intensities are kept comparable to rep ranges and total tonnage is about the same. In other words, studies that compare seven sets of three on a big exercise or a small exercise really with appropriate intensity shows the same muscle growth as three sets 10, but you get slightly more strength but the workouts take longer and it can be harder to recover from uh, because we're dealing with all these, these different factors. So what does that ultimately mean? Well, that means if you're training in that way, and, and I do advocate the high volume triple sometimes, so I call it like lift mastery, but on movement pattern splits, what do you end up with? You end up having to, in some cases, reduce the frequency slightly. In other words, when you start doing three sets of 10 with a fairly heavy weight, your frequency goes way down. Uh, you know, you, you end up having a whole day each week to squat, a whole day to deadlift, a whole day to bench, a whole day to the overhead press, then whatever accessory work you can throw in. And that's about all you can handle. When you start hitting 10 heavy triples of each of those, that, that's it. So you end up with what's essentially like a upper lower movement pattern split um, versus what the other, you could get higher frequency uh, per muscle group and exercise, but it ends up balancing out in the long term because hypertrophy is equal, strength is higher, so technically, Potential for overload is higher, but you end up having to reduce the frequency and it, it all ends up balancing out, doesn't it? It ends up balancing out. Now people will try to get around that stuff. They'll say, well, you could cut the, the rest times down, right? Well, you could do that when you go to the triples, but then what happens? You end up using less weight. Because when you look at all the studies that are out there, we find that longer rest times, meaning three minutes or more, produces more muscle growth when it's studied. Why? That goes contrary to all the bodybuilding myths, doesn't it? 60 seconds, 90 seconds. No, that, that's bodybuilding bullshit. That was made up. It's not actually what the research shows. Research shows longer rest times produces more growth. Why? Because you end up lifting a heavier weight. In other words, if you do, I don't care whether it's five reps of 225 and it's close to failure, or eight reps of 225 close to failure, or 10 reps of 225 close to failure. If you take at least three minutes, you can usually replicate the set, can't you? If you only rest a minute and a half, you have to reduce the weight or the reps. You end up with lower quality sets. You end up with a, a lower tonnage set as a result of it. You can't do as much work. Well, when it's studied, that produces less growth. So the problem we run into there is that we start cutting rest times down, we lose muscle growth. So we need longer rest times. So that tends to lend us back to the idea of, well, how many sets am I willing to do? How much time am I willing to spend in the gym? And this is what you have to balance because then we flip back over the other thing. That's what puts us back to the problem with the high volume triples, for example, which I like for certain phases. I think it works really well. I think it works really well in concurrent periodization works really well in concurrent training, doesn't it? I think most of us have done that at least at some point uh, because you have to rotate it for recovery at times. You can't sustain it long-term usually. Um, but you can't cut the rest times down or else we end up with a lower tonnage, less growth, and we, we get no benefit over just doing three sets with more reps, right? Because we also don't get those sets that are getting close enough to failure to really elicit maximal muscle growth unless we're doing it as dynamic effort work all right, or you're doing maximum speed. Now, I'm not saying that can't work. That can work, can it? But you need a lot of volume, you need a lot of first reps in there. You know, 10 doubles, 10 triples, done with a lighter weight for maximum speed, for compensatory acceleration, that has its place. 
Uh, but even that, if it's not put into some sort of periodization, the growth really stalls out fast on that. And again, everyone who's trained that way actually notices it, it absolutely works for, for building size, but it stalls if you don't have it periodized in some manner. So again, we, we end up running into all the problems with that, don't we? It all ends up balancing out on workload. It ends up balancing out. And the problem we run into with too many high reps is people say, well, you'll get the most growth, you'll get the most growth. Not really, because you have a lot of junk reps. And that's the other end of the equation. We run into junk reps and we start going above about five, six reps, don't we? Especially you get towards 10, because it's only the last five or so that have an actual training effect. And again, that's based upon the data. You know, that's based upon the data. Now, I'm not saying you can't do some higher volume phases of training, but here's what we run into with all that. We start doing a bunch of sets of 10, what happens? You plateau really quickly also because we don't get the same strength effect because the heavier weight produces more strength gains and the strength gains become essential. They become essential for long-term growth. So if you're just doing nothing but three or five sets of 10 all the time, you actually end up plateauing relatively quickly and you stop growing again. So again, this is why we have these different models of uh, periodization. Because if you want to do 10 rep sets, I'm going to tell you right now, your growth is going to be really good during certain phases, but then it's going to stall unless you find a way to periodize it, whether it's linear periodization or concurrent periodization. It, the problem with it, we always run back to, we always run back to is that unless you have some system in place to make sure that you progress, these things all end up being equal at the end of the day. They all end up being equal because everything ends up being a compromise. And at the end of the day, what produces the muscle growth, the workload, the workload. In other words, three sets of 10 will keep putting maximum muscle growth on you as long as you're progressing with the tension. Or if you can't progress on the tension, you better find a way to increase the volume. And when you're doing three sets of 10, it starts getting harder to increase volume. What do you do? You go to five sets of 10? Five sets of 12. You know, you have to increase the volume. We run into the same issue over on the really low reps. It will produce maximum muscle growth. You end up spending a lot more time in the gym though, don't you? Until your recovery starts to get buried. So that's ultimately what it comes down to. All of these different training approaches, as long as workload is sufficient, they are all capable of producing maximal muscle growth. They're all capable of producing maximal muscle growth. What matters is how you program it. And, and a lot of what I talk about ultimately comes down to, uh, and the reason I prefer certain rep ranges for different roles, is that it's just easier to progress longer. That's one reason I, always, I like the five to eight rep range. You can progress longer before you stall. That's it, that's the only reason. Because truth be told, I would rather train heavy all the time. I'd rather do one to three reps. I like heavy lifting. You can only handle so much of it though. And the same thing with the higher rep stuff. I think it's boring and it might produce really, really good muscle growth for short periods of time. And it does until it stalls. And then when you can't get any stronger, which doesn't happen to the novice lifter, but for the more advanced lifter, it does. So the reason I like certain rep ranges is that they're just more forgiving. That's it, they're just more forgiving. You can actually just do slow linear progression with a little change here, here and there. Rotate through stuff a little bit. It just requires less programming. That's it. The only reason I like certain rep ranges is cookie cutters like the five to eight. Uh, because at the end of the day, volume is what builds size and weight on the bar is what builds strength. But there's a synergy between the two. You can't fully separate them. You can't fully separate them. And I think what ends up happening is that because so many different people know these different approaches work, I think it's easy to get dogmatic and caught up in all this without realizing that at the end of the day, it's workload. And I know people say volume, but people confuse volume and workload. They like to say volume, but a lot of people interpret volume as reps time sets. Whereas in really volume, if we use the term workload, it would be something like reps time sets times distance moved. You know, so in other words, doing half reps is not giving you the same effect as 10 full reps, right? It's not the same. Moving things through their effective range of motion with the heaviest weight possible for the most reps that you can recover from in a training session 
that that's what will actually produce maximum muscle growth. How you choose to get there is a matter of personal preference and programming, right? As long as you get there, you're going to grow. It's about workload and recovery. That's it. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.